right, so I am here tonight with um, two very interesting characters. Um, I've got uh, Flip and Wesley from Daisy Talent Killers. How are you guys doing? All right, good, thanks. How's good, good. How, how are you guys feeling tonight? Are you are you ready for this? Are we are we in, uh, in for we'll an see. interesting interview? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> all right, so first of all, let's start with the clan. Flip, you want to say something about the clan, how it started, where it comes from, where the name comes from, because I'm really interested to hear that. Uh, yeah, uh, I was part of the HH clan at the, I rate the end of their lives on PlayStation 3, and when they moved over, uh, we decided to make our own clan, and I mean, the name just kind of came, I'm a huge fan of the Lucky Luke cartoons. And uh, oh, I saw the I maps see. of uh, the maps. He was the sheriff of Daisy Town, and so it just ended up being the Daisy Town Killers. And uh, I like what he stands mm -hmm. for. So yeah, that's where that came from. Um, a lot of guys made fun of our names, even guys in the clan. But I think they got used to it now, so it's fine. <laughs> that's true. Daisy Power. Are we? <laughs> that's ah. fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> now speaking of names, quickly. Um, I heard from you that your uh, another reason for your gamer tag is forever live in peace. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, so tell me about that. What what's your philo is that your philosophy in life? Uh, yeah, to a great extent. All right. Um, if you lose control of things and get into too much issues, you tend to lose lose who you are. So, all right, uh, peace is a little bit better than war all the time. Although it's kind of ironic that we play. First it is quite ironic games. that you're playing Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> and where's how long have you been in DTK? Uh, I don't. Uh, for fuck's sake, okay, I should probably stop playing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been with DTK probably about two years now. So uh, I only started playing multiplayer about two years ago, and. Uh, before that, I used to buy PlayStation 4 games, play the campaign, and sell the game afterwards. And it was actually my nephew that put me onto multiplayer. Um, gave it a go, and I was hooked. Huh? I played Battlefield 4 for the first time, probably around 2015. I played Team Deathmatch only. I camped with an LMG in corridors and uh, doorways, like all good noobs do. And then started playing on the Daisy Town uh, Killer server. server, yeah. And then, uh, Sorry, I'm still playing we, clearly. And then uh, we kind of discovered him there because he was there all the time, and we decided to yeah. adopt him. And uh, oh, you he adopted the stray dog. Yeah, this and he true. just never left. He's this still, is what yeah. happens when you feed strays. <laughs> and they, they tend to keep coming back, and then you've got to make like a little bed for them, and uh, it just yeah, becomes so messy. Demanding. So messy. What happened was I, I kept I kept getting wrecked by them. So I was playing against guys like uh, Thot Farum, who is like a legendary guy on uh, Battlefield 4 PS3. He was a legendary tanker and um, a few of the other guys as well and I kept getting wrecked by them and I just kept joining this, the server because I'm so stubborn, you know what I mean? If something's oh, hard yeah. for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going at it, even though, you know, my, my KD was probably in the negative for the first six months. Um, I enjoyed the <laughs> well, gameplay. That's how only way you get better, right, is to play better people this and learn better uh, habits. Yeah. I don't know about the habits. I don't know if my habits have improved <laughs> since joining DTK. But no, <laughs> no, I, I, but I can I, probably believe that. I say I love it. <laughs> so how many people do you have in the clan at the moment? Uh, all right, from Battlefield 1, um, I see there's about 20-something, 20 24 guys. But I think in the clan overall, we're probably about 30 plus minus, I don't know. So yeah. somewhere okay. around about there. So yeah. what are the games they're playing? Uh, we play FIFA, we play, there's a couple of guys on Siege. And uh, oh, uh, yes. Wesley plays Goat Simulator as well sometimes. A goat simulator is my, my <laughs> first choice. He's, he's going to yeah. Game. yeah. He's going I only, to I only play game. Battlefield when Goat Simulator is like down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very yeah, good I game. Mean, it's it's very informative. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think we a lot of us got to Hardline as well, but we haven't played it for a while. Yeah. Um, oh, but Hardline. I think, that yeah. for me is probably one of the most underrated games. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, we enjoy yeah. it, uh, and uh, we also met quite a lot of guys on there that eventually joined the clan. Um, we used to oh, play awesome. quite a lot. Um, yeah. Although although I think um, it also changed quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yes, but yes. yeah, it's, it's a cool game. I really enjoy it as well. A I think few of us a... actually 
Yeah, a few of us actually bought it on PlayStation 4 just for shits and giggles because the price was cheap. It was like, it was like 170 bucks. rand. Yeah. yeah. Oh my and, god. Yeah. And with the, and all the, the strength tagging, yeah, we yes. could we could tag and back. So that was what we were doing, <laughs> like killing people, spray tagging them with our emblem, and then teabagging them. It was oh, just lovely, like lovely. Really, just for shits and giggles. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I must say, I, I do love Hardline. I still play Hardline. It's still uh, one of yeah. my favorite games. Um, it was actually my first online game. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, like it's, it really has a special place in my heart. I see it as a mix between GTA and Battlefield, almost. Yes, um, yeah. It's yeah. The, the cops and robbers thing yeah. is awesome. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. The choppers suck, right. though. You can't fly the choppers. The cars are okay. <laughs> Soundtracks are I, I generally can't fly choppers in any game, so <laughs> I'll just okay. uh, bow out of that one. Uh -huh. um, so, okay, so what uh, what is your plan, and what are you guys thinking at the moment about the netcode issues that we've got? With Ooh. Battlefield 1, yeah. it's, it's an issue. Uh, I mean, like I've, I've even seen a lot of articles about guys saying a lot of guys are leaving Battlefield 1 because of the issues, which is kind of stupid, because Battlefield 4 had actually more issues when they started. Yes. So I think they will fix it. But um, I think we had a conversation where you also said that when they fix something, they break something. So they need yes. to get it to a point where they, they give the people what they want and not try and reinvent the game the whole time. So I don't know. It's, it's a major issue. You've seen some of my clips. So I've even got a response from DICE, uh, the guy's name is Kita, I'm not sure who he is actually, but he wanted to know more about what happened and why it's happening. So I've even seen it online, a lot of guys are complaining about it and it's making it impossible to play sometimes, so it, it yeah. sucks. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm hearing it from a lot of people at the moment that, um, you know, uh, they don't want to play and all that sort of thing. But you're right when you say that Battlefield 4 was worse at launch and probably for a much longer time afterwards as well. Yeah, yeah and the people complain just too much about that. I think it's, it's gamers' nature. It, yeah. It's just in our habit to complain about stuff yeah, that we don't like. It's kind of split our clan a little bit in that uh, some of the guys just aren't willing to play on that netcode. But again, you know, they, they kind of play in their own squads or DTK squads on, on Siege. There's a few of us that still play FIFA together, obviously. So we do all still play together. We always make a, a kind of pilgrimage to Battlefield 4 now and again for some DTK yeah. knife parties. But um, oh. until the netcode's <laughs> resolved, I don't see us like all kind of enjoying playing on uh, Battlefield 1. And then That's there's the, the server issue, yeah. Because we've, yes. we've, we've got guys all over, you know, we've got... Uh, We've got someone in Sweden, a female clan member. We've got uh, a few guys in the UK. We've got someone in Kenya. And then we've got mm -hmm. uh, Yudi who travels through Africa. <laughs> he was just in Zambia. Zambia. G-Man in yes. Zambia, yeah. So, uh, and it is, is he back from Zambia, by over. the way? He is. Yes. He actually oh, arrived, okay. I think, last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right now that was one of the things I was going to ask you. Um, you know, seeing as you've got members from outside of South Africa, what, how do you actually play with them? I mean, are they coming coming to play on our uh, servers? And what is the, the challenge that you're finding at the moment? When when we joined lately, when I joined and them there, it's impossible for me to play. I'm I'm running a four meg line, so it's impossible for me to to play there. But they can play on our servers. Um, uh, now and then they will complain a little bit, but I think their internet that side is much better. Um, they can actually play with us this side. So hopefully they can fix it in Battlefield 4. I mean, we all used to play in European service and there was a little bit lag, but it's not as bad as on Battlefield 1. So oh, yes, for sure. Uh, for sure. Hopefully they can sort out and, I mean, like, to, to play with the overseas guys in their service as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay, good. so, okay. Does anybody from your platoon play on any different um, platforms? Or have you got any different console players or any PC players? Mm, no, I don't think so. Don't no, no we you don't are solely a PS4 fan. Xbox people, we, we don't believe in them. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, we just, we just haven't had uh, Xbox people in our, our clan. A few guys have <laughs> left for P PC. Um, so yeah. T-Bag, who was quite, quite a main member in our Battlefield 4 platoon, he left to go and play PC, but that's just because he wanted a new challenge, you know what I mean? He was, yeah. he was a phenomenal 
Battlefield 4 PS4 PS, uh, PS4 player, but just decided that he wanted a new challenge, and that's why he went to to PC. And then there's Descendant. He went to PC, but uh, I see he's back now on PlayStation 4 as well. But that's about it. Yeah. Clash of Clans. Okay. Now, are you guys recruiting? <laughs> are you are you looking for new members? And um, what do you look for in a member if you if you do look to recruit somebody? Uh, we we always open to to accept people into the clan. Um, like like Shawnee said today, um, we we recruit based on chemistry, if they can contribute to the chemistry of the team. Um, you can always take a bad player and make him better, but you can't take a guy with a bad person and la personality and make him lucky. I mean, like, he, you need to get guys that just kind of fit in with, with how we do things and not be too sensitive about things. So we're always open for that. Uh, yeah. But we're not actively recruiting. I think if, if the clan gets too big, you kind of lose the essence of the clan. You lose the heart of the clan because there's so many people and it also opens the door yeah. up for for guys to i don't know get disagreements is sometimes personality clashes and things like that so it's easier to keep it land um i don't think we'll go more than 30 people um i would like to have more guys on battlefield one um and it's slowly growing but other than that i don't we're not actively recruiting but we're always open to meet new guys it's how it is yeah. Okay, now yeah. speaking of personality clashes and that, um, are you guys, do you have like a rival clan that you're always up against? Uh, <laughs> it depends, nah. depends. It's a bit of nervous <laughs> laughter over there. Ah, nah. <laughs> nah, everybody, we like everybody and everybody loves yeah. us. Now, you know what, uh, when you talk about rivalry, um, our exposure to, to the competitive Playing with the other guys is mainly on Battlefield 4. I mean, we haven't done it on Battlefield 1. And uh, of course there is. I mean, if you're going to get into a competitive scene and you play competitions against the other clans, they, it's, it's just how it's going to be. I mean, competitive gaming, there's always guys who's going to gloat and there's always some banter that's going to go on. Yeah. And uh, for sure, I mean, like, it, it's, I think the rivalry started as soon as we got onto PlayStation 4. I mean, we we were barely trying to get our feet and already there was comments made on our battle log um, about <laughs> what we achieved on Battlefield 3 and we shouldn't think that we're the best clan and we will soon realize that we're not the best clan. And, oh, that's uh, so unnecessary. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll show you know what happens when there's that much testosterone. On, on a 64-man server, imagine what happens in that kind of situation. What's a testosterone? Oh. I, I don't understand. Oh, my God. It's, it's what makes <laughs> men throw handbags, but, like, nonstop. And for me, like, I've never liked the drama side of things. You know, what I love about DTK is the fact that uh, everyone can take a joke. And I think that's the core of what our clan is or, or who they are, you know. We can really take the piss out of anyone and no one takes it seriously. Those guys that do take it seriously, they don't last. So a lot of yeah. the, the clashes we've had with other clans is around that kind of stuff, you know. Um, for the other guys also that are, you know, taking it too seriously, we showed that we could play competitively. So they roped us in over the space of like months to play a tournament. We played a tournament and we, we, we won it just to prove that we ca can play competitively when we want to, but we really don't like the drama or the attention that, that comes with it. For us, it's mainly about like the camaraderie that we get from the party chats, the laughs, and uh, the games that we play on Friday nights because it's not always serious, you know. So we'd spend three hours on a Friday night playing DTK knife party, just playing with knives and uh, repair tool and <laughs> defibrillators. Okay. And eventually oh, yes, always, we used to have those. And eventually, there's <laughs> yeah. always a guy who shows up with a shotgun eventually. I mean, yes. Yeah, there's always, always a guy with a shotgun. Yeah. And then everybody yeah. gets shotgun and then it just spoils the fun. And then everybody <laughs> just to show you, like, we, we, we don't care about the, the KD or... I think for mm -hmm. some clans, that's... that's that they bolt on. They yeah. need to show that they're competitive in any situation. And, it gets tiring sometimes because they expect other clans to be in the same same mindset and if they're not i don't know it's it causes politics is this uh, the testosterone you speak of i i right i right that's where the handbags comes out so yeah is that where the handbags come out now speaking of handbags <laughs> and testosterone okay 
what is your view then on female gamers? No pressure. I, I checked. I checked. <laughs> uh, I checked. Uh, well, even they must have testosterone, but they tend to not swing hand back so much. Um, I checked the new uh, in June. There's a, a Battlefield uh, DLC coming out, and I saw the yes, picture. And I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, it, yes, it looks I like have. a chick. I think I it's have. going to it be It's actually very interesting. It is. Um, there is a, a video by Westy, um, which actually explains the whole concept of the um, the female um, soldiers and where they yeah. were. They were very small um, battalion. There were two battalions. But, um, yeah, there's there's a whole history there. And uh, it's quite interesting, actually. The reason why they used to have the female um, soldiers in there was actually to boost morale. And because the Russians were actually retreating, they wanted the female soldiers there so that the guys would feel uh, ashamed hmm. to retreat. That's well, interesting. That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> I, I, I thought so too. Worked. I thought that was quite well, nice. I bet you did. We've, for us, we've, uh -huh. I mean, we've, we've got a, a female in our clan. So for us, it's never been about anything more than we enjoy playing with, like, you know, very gamers. We've got such a mix of guys. We... We got Sean Lee, who's 12 years old. He lives in Johannesburg. He's starting a, a WWE clan for DTK. Oh, lovely! <laughs> yeah, he loves WWE, but he also loves Battlefield. But yeah. um, it's it's just a mixture of completely different people from completely different walks of life, from 16 years old to 36 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, when uh, on when we were still on PlayStation 3, we had like a whole a girl squad. I think it was about four or five girls in in Daisy Town Killers, and yeah. uh, we had an interesting setup. It was the two sisters and the mother playing together. Oh, that, wow. that was very interesting. <laughs> the father <laughs> eventually joined, and then the uncle joined, and the brother joined. Oh wow! <laughs> How did they all do that in one house? Uh, I think no, no. The daughters are older now, so I think they moved out. I don't know. The mother and the father used to get it right. But yeah, that, that I don't understand this, insane. you know, because we've got a few couples gaming in the South African community that game together. Now, I don't understand how you can have two people playing the same game in the same house and not be swearing at each other. I, I was wondering the same <laughs> I don't get it. Locked yeah. doors. That's some serious <laughs> relationship goals right there. Definitely. You need to have a system going because, I mean, it can... <laughs> if, you, if you kill the other one too many times, you, you might have to pay the price. I mean, like, well, yeah. I think that's probably why they stick on the same side all the time. Ah, oh, that makes what's, sense. Yeah. Amazing. What's in the anti-nuptial contract? <laughs> Your KD cannot be yeah. higher than my KD. Uh, yeah, and you can't join a different clan or yeah, else the marriage can't. is dissolved. Absolutely over. Absolutely over. <laughs> Yeah, you can't sure. have better stats than me. <laughs> you see, this is why I don't write these contracts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But uh, right. I, I think I think there, there's too few too few females playing uh, TV games that we know of. I think the community should actually compromise and make it easier for females to join. I think it's a stigma that girls is not as good as boys, but I think it's been proven wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Queen Sparrow, you, I think there's a couple of you guys who play quite well and can keep your own. So I think a lot of girls think it's just a guy's thing. So yeah. I think if they change the stigma, it will be good. I think definitely. Although I, I must say, when, when I do say to people that I'm a female gamer, they're like, you're a what? <laughs> it's like, it, it doesn't quite register. Like, oh, cute, you play Sims? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> if they see in action. Um, but yeah. you know what, how, how, what helps as well? I mean, Yenix that plays with us, she she made a couple of videos of her gameplay, and some of it's very, very impressive. Yeah. Um, a girl should do that I more often. That, I mean, actually. like, yeah, she, and I mean, when she started, she, she wasn't very good, and she ended up being quite a handy player and understanding the game and the principles and how it works. So, yeah, and she enjoyed played it. in tournaments. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing with female gamers. I, I've also noticed that they tend to be a lot more strategic. Huh. They 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 this, tend to think a little bit more around the flanking sides of things. I was thinking vindictive, and... like uh, someone oh. kills you in a certain position, you'll come back to that position. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about, Wes. 
<laughs> Honestly, I, I, on, I, that just went way over my head. I have video uh, footage. I have video <laughs> footage. <laughs> to prove this. Maybe it was Justin Brooksy, so it might have been a different goal. Oh, wait. Speaking <laughs> of this. Okay. <laughs> Shots fired! Anybody, anybody in this um, community that is on the group knows yeah. about this little bromance. Yeah. <laughs> That's Justin a Brooksy. Time ago. Yeah, you please just 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 shout out to him right now because we know it's going to happen sometime during this interview. No, I think he's a cool guy. He's uh, <laughs> he played with us quite quite a bit on on Battlefield Four. That's why we take the piss with each other. But uh, he's a cool guy because he can also have a laugh and and takes the piss back. Yeah, doesn't take things serious. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't think I've ever heard him really rage. <laughs> no, he just never. pretty much yeah. laughs it off, and he's like, yeah. yeah. We've got a few guys in our clan like that, like so fucking chilled. Even when the rest of us are raging about whatever we're raging about, they can just remain calm and have a laugh about it. And that's that's the kind of guys I like playing with. Huh? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, okay. You are not focused on KD or anything like that, but what do you think about the difference between a really great infantry player and a tank uh, player, uh, or as as they refer to in in the community as a tank camper. Yeah, for sure. Tank, tank campers. Horse. Yeah, you, you oh. know what? Uh, they, I think there's a space for everybody, and there's a, g a massive advantage is having those guys in your team as the infantry, uh, I, and especially Battlefield One. I mean, the vehicles are so slow. I, I don't think I'll master any vehicle. We hate the guys just camping the vehicles, uh, and. I think there will always be a rivalry as well. Sometimes we just wish, get out your vehicle, come face me on the ground, and they will probably hope that I'll bring your tank as well. So I don't know. In, in Battlefield 4, we we had guys that was absolutely brilliant in choppers, and uh, it takes a while for you to gain that skill. So respect to that. But other than that, I think uh, vehicle campers should sometimes just leave their vehicle so we can square off one on one yeah. on the ground as well. Yeah, so if, they can get if feedback, a tank is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if if a tank is using his his tank for you know the the good of his his platoon, so the team he's playing on, and he's actually using it to take flags, he's actually using it to cap objectives, he's ac actually using it to provide cover for the infantry players on the ground, then then good for him. But these guys that are coming out of spawn and only hitting their their gimme flag. You know, and killing as many people mm. as they can, and as soon as they get hit with the first rocket gun, reverse into spawn, repair, and then just repeat the Come process, out, or, yeah. or park four kilometers off the flag and just like bombard any infi player running onto that flag, especially the guys in the artillery trucks. That drives me nuts because then then they're not playing as a team. You know, they're not they're not playing yeah. the objective. It takes okay. it takes the fun out of the game. I mean, like I've yeah. seen on. And, and and I know the competitive scene once again. This it's a lot of times that's how the guys play because they want a win as much as possible. They they will do yeah. whatever they have to do to win. I've seen guys climbing in a in a, a Apache helicopter and just hover it so far out of reach for any RPG or anything, and they just mow down the infantry the whole time. And there's nothing you can do about it. So that that kind of irritates. Irritates me. There's nothing you can do, and it yeah. takes the fun out of the game. They end up with a 60, 70 plus KD, and you've died the whole time. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but you end up not wanting to play teams like that. I mean, they get the reputation like that, and then you're like, you know, everyone just kind of avoids them anyway. Totally, and the 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 guys will always get shit from the other guys from the infantry. But the the funny yeah. thing is, those guys who he does that in vehicles. You usually got the biggest mouths as well, and <laughs> that's even more frustrating. <laughs> yeah. All right then. So, what is your favorite game mode to play um, as a squad and personally as well? Uh, FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Battlefield One. We've been playing a lot of. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Conquest, mainly because of the servers. I mean, like, I, I, what, what. Get, what I don't get is why do people like Conquest and TDM only? I mean, to, to try and fill the operation server is so difficult. To to try and play a, a DOM game is so 
so difficult. Pigeons. I mean, like I actually, when I started Battlefield One, enjoyed the pigeons. Um, and pigeons are I don't fun. Know, I enjoyed it. Um, the one guy summed it up quite quite funnily. He said it's basically just DDM with the pigeon. Um, <laughs> guys are just running around killing each other, and there's a pigeon involved somewhere. But, uh, a chicken. I, I, a, a chicken. <laughs> and the fact that they can shoot it down as well. So I mean. I still haven't uh, seen one fucking pigeon. I don't know how many I've played with Flip. I, I still haven't seen the fucking pigeon. <laughs> yeah, so how do you know it's real then? One. If you haven't I, seen I, it, I how do you know it exists? I, I thought Flip was screwing with me like the first three times we played it because I, didn't, I still don't know where the we, pigeon we, is. Yeah, we were trying to fill up a server and I think after about 40 minutes we gave up. Yeah, um, I think I... I think I enjoy the, the Conquest game modes purely because they, they last longer and the wait isn't that long. Like a DOM round can last as long as it takes you to load the next map. So that's what frustrates me when I play DOM. Yeah. But I prefer like Amiens where there's no planes. So it's more focused on, on the Infi gameplay. There's vehicles, but they don't affect the, the Infi gameplay as much. Because I love playing Infi, so I prefer that in Argon Forest where there's no vehicles. Yeah, pe uh, people but... think I'm strange when I say that Armion is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, mine too. Yeah, by Which far. Which one is that? Armion. The city with the bridges. Yeah, yes. yeah with the two okay. bridges. Yeah. yeah, that's quite fun. I like the forest. The French city. It's beautiful. Well, yes, Argon is nice too, but uh, Argon tends to become really um, focused like on lock. bridge. Like locker outdoors. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a desert one. What's it see? I can I can see when the when the uh, rental service start to come, it's going to be all gone twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah. No shotguns. <laughs> I hate and I hate it. Off, uh, <laughs> uh, I hate it. Off, um, on Battlefield Four, locker. I hate it, locker. And I like the forest. And metro. And metro, even metro. Oh, metro. There's always these choke With points, RPGs. and sometimes people can't get past the choke points. Oh, no. that was but, it was uh, like a it was like fish in a barrel. That's really what it was. If you could just position yourself properly, all you needed to do yeah. is just keep shooting down the same just, hallway all the time. Yeah, for sure. Get a guy feeding you ammo. You can park there the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like Dom actually. I just think I like I like domination. I like the fast paced stuff. Yeah. I'm not as good in it yet, but I like it. I like the close combat stuff. Mainly because yeah. I'm a useless yeah. sniper. And <laughs> I like Assault at this point. I don't think there was a lot of hype about the Hell Regal, and I hated the game until I got the Hell Regal, and at least I can shoot something now. <laughs> Forty percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so out of all sixty rounds, you get about oh, say two kills, maybe. Yeah, and then and then there's no hit markers for the rest, or I don't know. <laughs> the guy's just running away. I don't know. For but me yeah, too. Assault, it's, it's uh, assault, yeah. Assault as well. And also, you're also hurting around with the Hell Regal. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying Medic lately though. So I've started... Medic is fun uh, as well sometimes. Yeah, playing. There's something satisfying about shooting with a single fire weapon that's, that you don't get from, from playing Assault. Yeah, that's... Uh, unless, un, un, yeah. unless it's a shotgun. Then, then unless, it's I, fun, yeah. Geez, yeah, no. yeah, I'm probably one of the most inaccurate players that I've ever met. So for me, scout class is probably at about rank three. <laughs> Yet so support, is, support is maxed I, out. I think, you're <laughs> I think you're underselling yourself. I've, I've seen yeah. a lot of guys. I don't know how they miss me. Uh, I can see they're getting hit, hit markers because I'm losing some health. But like they have to reload a couple of times if they want to kill me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you want to believe it's netcode, but it's and not netcode. Yeah, and then you get the guys with a shotgun, and after the th third shot. You turn around and you can kill them, and then you think, how the hell did you miss me? I mean, like you're standing oh, right yeah, there with a shotgun. Well, it's almost like when you turn around and you look at the um, the wall behind you, and you can see a perfect outline of where the bullets went around <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, uh, for <laughs> sure. That, yeah. That's hilarious. Okay, so what do you guys think is it's like a really good player, um, you know, in your personal opinion? What makes a good player for a team? Uh, not talking about vehicle players. If you talk about infantry, I will say yeah, yeah. movement. I think aim, aim and movement, um, what we've learned yeah. on Battlefield 4 playing with some of the Divi Division 1 guys, I mean, they got insane aim. You, you can't believe how 
accurate these guys are and they're constantly moving they don't stand yeah. around the whole time they assess the battle and they know exactly where to go so i would write yeah, yeah movement and aim eh? yeah and i'd say i'd say map knowledge too because mm -hmm. uh we've actually had the privilege of having two great players play for dtk one being uh alex the pro from nl clan and uh, the other being pro nation right so he's playing on his uh, descendants account now so he still plays with us but those two guys taught us so much a lot, in terms yeah. of in fee play and you know game strats and movements and uh and in fee play that's um it improved all of our games you know so instead of knife party on a friday night we'd actually have uh, d flag on metro with guys that will absolutely shit on you and you'll end up with, you know, four for 28 <laughs> as your KD. But but next time it'll be eight for 28. And then eventually, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you kind of going neutral or even. And then if you only just get one positive, you know, even if it is 34 yeah. for 35 or 35 for 34, um, it feels good to get to that point where you're playing against these guys that are, are so accomplished in terms of esports and first player shooters. So those guys done a lot for us, and I think uh, especially around the map knowledge and and mm. strats in Battlefield 4 that helped us. Settings yeah. and yeah. Yeah, and settings, yeah. Okay, and like, where do you see Battlefield One like headed? Uh, do you, do you do you think it's going to get better, or do you think that it's going to sort of you know the, the interest is going to sort of wane off and people are going to start playing something else? Uh, there's already a lot of guys saying that. People are, are moving away from Battlefield Battlefield One um, due to the lack that it's not a competitive game yet. Um, yeah. I posted a video in one of the WhatsApp groups today about a guy called Waffy, uh, and he explained it quite clearly um, why it is not a competitive game. I mean, with the game mechanics, with the, the layout of the maps, uh, spawning points, there's, there's quite a lot of factors. But Dice did say they they're going to bring in. Comp bringing something competitive. I don't know if it's going to be maps or game mode. I mean, we had quite a obliter or obliteration on Battlefield 4 that came in much later as well. Mm. So if they don't, if they're not going to make it competitive, I mean, I don't, I don't see Battlefield 1 becoming more than it is now. And the problem is, I don't know if guys will go back to Battlefield 4. Where, where do they go? Where do we go from here? I mean, Siege, some, either you like it or you don't like it. Uh, I like the big, big maps with the vehicles, with the buildings and everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know where, where will guys go after this un, unless Battlefield brings out to the, another game next year, maybe. Uh, Do you I think the know. DLCs are going to make a difference? I mean, has this one really made a difference so far? To tell you the truth, I've probably only played it once or twice. I mean, I haven't even bothered to, to buy the premium. I first want to see... Yeah. where it's going all right uh, and uh, they were talking about bringing in another country i mean like if you have france as well uh, it it could be interesting um but we will have to wait and see i mean uh like i said i'm a little bit skeptic about the the competitive modes on on battlefield one and if you don't have that competitive mode uh, we were having a discussion in a whatsapp group today and uh, discussing if it's going to be competitive or not, and we decided that to have our to get our competitive fix, we we should actually get a couple of horses and just race them around the course on the map, um, <laughs> some oh, C4s yes. and stuff, and um, maybe we can make our own games in this game. I mean, there's some vehicles as well. I mean, I've seen some guys <laughs> doing crazy stuff with those bikes, um, but yeah, I mean, other Kinda. other than that, <laughs> yeah, Ghost Rider. <laughs> Apparently the bike is like very low and it starts burning and nobody kills it. You can drive it around on flames and it looks mm -hmm. quite cool. We took some yeah. videos of that. All right, <laughs> now I have rider. got to go and try that. <laughs> <laughs> that looks yeah, you'll normally so. see a guy named uh, DTK Escape Panda on that bike. Just riding <laughs> around the map it testing on. how long it can last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you do that with I've, a horse though? <laughs> no, horses don't catch fire. I've tried. Oh. I've tried. You've tried that? 
That's so disappointing. <laughs> Maybe two two hundred points. I, I do think it can be competitive though in in the right setting, and especially yeah. with rentable servers. I know the South African community can can make their their own kind of tournaments around that. Of course. What of I'd course. like to see is rentable servers where the server control, you know, that the administrator has, is a lot is a lot better. So, for example, you know, being able to set weapons that aren't allowed to be used on your server and the yes. person can't equip them. So yes. if they join the server and they want to you know, equip a shotgun, they can't actually spawn us until they've changed that weapon. So um, these were the types of things they were discussing originally, but then yeah. they never ended up implementing them. So yeah. you got to wonder, yeah. is it something that they can't do? Oh, or is it just something that's been sidelined? This, this Wafi guy said um, that Almost only two percent of the guys who bought a Battlefield One is the competitive guys. The rest of the guys are just guys who bought it and want to have fun with the game. So why will why will Dice and EA go and spend so much resources on? See now, only I don't two, think 2%? I agree with that. I don't think I agree with that because I think that if there was a real strong competitive presence on Battlefield One, if it was a, an ability to be more competitive, then a lot more people would do it. Yeah. I tend to agree with you. Um, I think it's a bad move on DICE. And, I mean, everybody was waiting for the next competitive um, title from them, and then they gave us Battlefield 1. I mean, like, it's an awesome yeah. game. But now guys are scrounging around to try and find something competitive to do. I mean, like, the horse racing at this point seems the most competitive thing we can do on it at this point. <laughs> and you don't I, have to I'm, keep I'll admit, it is pretty competitive, though. It'll get badass. You will see the handbags flying. They, they want blood tests from the horses. Money. Tests. Yes, there you go. Yeah, there we can. Go. We can pay. Yeah, I'll be the bookie, and they can pay me in war bonds. You want to trick I mean, breed and lineage or, of the horses and or PS4 yeah. vouchers. You know what I mean? Well, as long as I get to dress up and go to these events, it's cool. I'm happy. Battlefield. I can do this. And the other thing, as well, to mm. yeah, carry on. I was going to say, for for me, even if it doesn't become competitive, I enjoy playing it. You know, it's not the yeah. only game I play, so I can really put in a few hours and enjoy playing it. I enjoy yeah. the fact that it's completely different from Battlefield 4. For some of the guys, That's exactly they it. wanted it to be more like Battlefield 4, and I, I couldn't disagree more. You know, it needed to be a different game for us to enjoy it. Yeah separate from that. So for me, if it doesn't become competitive and I'm going to wait for the new title, then, then so be it. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it is completely different. And a lot of people went from Battlefield 4 and they went to Battlefield 1 and they were like, what is this? What? Yeah. 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 And, and they expected it to be very similar, but it's, it's, it's a completely different game. Yeah. But now going back to this competitive thing, if DICE wasn't planning on making a competitive. Why have they spent resources and time on actually making an eSports section of DICE? I don't know if you're aware of this, but Some, there is actually yeah. a developer who is in charge of eSport now. But this, this is supposedly for a standalone title, and I've, I've also read up on that a bit. So some people believe that that esports section is going to focus on a standalone title away from Battlefield, away from all the other titles specifically aimed at the esports or the competitive scene. They don't know what it's going to be. They don't know if it's going to be more like Siege or more like a CS, CSGO, you know, but um, I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. That could be no, it just it, it boggles my mind that they keep coming up with new content all the time and they're throwing new DLCs at us and they're throwing new game modes at us. But we're all sitting back going, just fix what is there now. Yeah. And we'd be so much happier. Or give us a form of control where we can actually you know what I mean, set the server fix it ourselves. To a set a set number of players, uh yes. you know, a set time a, a set uh, measure, whether it be flags or time or kills or whatever it may be, we can actually make this competitive if they just give us that control or at yeah. least rentable servers. Yeah. It's like they've got two completely separate um, divisions inside there now where the one that's coming up with the ideas, the research and development team, they're brilliant. You know, yeah. They're doing their job. They're, they're going ahead and doing what they need to do. But the guys sitting at the back, the support guys are like throwing like, I don't know, paper jets at each other. 
<laughs> they're not doing their job <laughs> at all. It's, it's making very sand castles I, in the back there or something. Uh, I agree with you. It's extremely confusing. Playing blocks. It, 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 it's almost, it almost seems like they they found some things that was unexpected. Um, maybe reactions to certain of the, the game mechanics and now they're not sure which direction to go. So they want to go this way, but then they do something that takes it the other way. And it's confusing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but then yeah, they'll, they'll turn like... around and they'll tell you that they, ex they intended it to be that way. Yeah, for sure. Somebody has to save yeah. his job. Yeah. 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 So somebody's think... like, no, no, but, but we wanted it that way. But we'll change yeah, it yeah, because that's... you said you didn't like it. <laughs> at so, the end of the day, yeah. it's a, a business, and they got to do what makes uh, what makes them money. I guess at the end of the day as well. So they're gonna aim at at everyone and try and make everyone happy all the time, which is never gonna it's never gonna it's happen. It's never gonna happen. No. Yeah. But no. I, I don't think this ping thing is is working out very well for them at all. No. I don't know what they did. I mean, like it it, it was much better in the beginning, and then it was that patch, and it just went crazy. And now you it's can't like somebody play with tripped these, over a cord. Yeah, or missed a button or something. It's, I don't yeah, know. It's just pretty, he put a Y instead of a T or something. I don't know. Well, they uh, promised I mean, maybe... monthly updates now, so you know. Hopefully, this is. Oh, I'm sure this is going to be one of the first things to be fixed. But hopefully, we'll see uh, a quicker progression of stuff happening now that it's monthly updates. It shouldn't have broken in the first place. I think one guy was just bored, and then he says, oh, "Let's just." Piss off the world gaming community of Battlefield <laughs> 1 and see what comes up. Okay, so are there any other upcoming games that you're looking forward to? Wow. Yeah, the next Battlefield. <laughs> well, for me, Battlefront, I'm looking at this going, I really hope you guys have got your shit together. Uh, I haven't even not played, played it. Battlefront. Mm. Yeah. We, we, we so hooked Okay, I'm closing on, the interview um, now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I hate it. <laughs> love Star Wars, love the franchise, love the movies. Just, yeah. uh... it's, it's, it's actually such a weird question because there's a lot of guys um, that venture and find the new games and we just so hooked on Battlefield. Uh, and I mean, I think the community plays a big part of it. Um, we're part of the community and we tend to kind of, to, to a certain extent, go where the community is going. Um, and because of the clan that was playing Battlefield 4 together, um, we never really ventured to go look at other games. There was a couple of guys who went for Destiny, but it didn't last very long and they came back. And there were some guys who went Battlefront because they got it with the PlayStation 4 and then they came back. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's kind of weird. We, I think, mainly any other games. Yeah. All right. I think it's a, no. I think it's also a time a time. Sorry, I think it's also a time thing. I mean, we we only have so much time we can play games, and at this point, there's still a lot to learn from Battlefield yes, One. That's so the thing. We, that's a, that's we, a huge thing. We yeah. kind of yeah, we kind of just stick with it, and then they bring in new content, and then we want to check it out, and so it goes. So they get us. And Goat Simulator 2018. Yeah, for huge. sure. That's a, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> there's even a cow in it. Yeah. Is there a cow? Yeah, that's a is DLC. that like is that a DLC? Okay, cool. Yeah. Is that paid DLC? <laughs> yeah, only for premium form. I was actually I was I was looking forward to the goose because have you have you like paid the <laughs> you know, the demo for the goose? Oh my god. <laughs> um, actually, so, actually, yeah. <laughs> so I'm so, gonna go get it now. <laughs> yes, exactly. You have to go get it now, because now, now you can run around as a whole herd. <laughs> yeah, ahead, ahead of gooses, yeah. Oh, herd of geese. <laughs> geese. <laughs> yeah. Geese is a flock. It's actually, it's not a herd. I'm lying. It's a gaggle. No, it's a I gaggle know. of geese. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There you go. So, where do you see uh, competitive gaming in in South Africa? The whole South African community, just as a um, like a finishing off statement now. What, you know, what do you see happening in the future? Do you think it's going well? Mm, maybe murder. I don't know. <laughs> I think, <laughs> uh, think esports is is only going to get massive. Like we, we haven't even scratched the surface of where it is in South Africa. There's absolutely almost no platform 
in terms of esports in South Africa. There's there's two billion rand apparently in marketing budget, but they've got nowhere to put that. You know, you've got uh, DGL or Telcom Gaming, you've got MWeb, all of those are affiliated with the actual service providers, which is not yeah. great for me. The first thing of of I've loved seeing was Battle Bros and the fact that it was around the community, the PlayStation community specifically, and yeah. it was around the game and uh, getting that community together. And I'd prefer to see more of those things, more of the the Battle Bros style of esports uh, communities being built. But I don't see myself getting involved with like a, a Telcom gaming league. It's probably the biggest swear word biased, for most of the guys it? I game with. Yeah, 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 it does. Uh, what, what, what cracks me up is that the guys are, when we were playing Battlefield 1, they didn't want to allow any of the international players because of loping. And now they say, no, they, they don't want the international guys because of hyping. And <laughs> what, what, the guys, what the guys are missing is that these guys, a lot of these guys bring a wealth of experience and, and knowledge yeah. and oh, for sure. if if we keep them out of our community we're missing out on that i mean what what diabolic uh, and danny did for us uh, descendant uh, was huge um, and we learned quite a lot of the, from them and they even exposed us to to some of the other players and we played some games against these guys as well and we see how they operate so uh, I think if, if, if we want to grow the community as well and become a little bit more competitive, we need to allow these guys to, to play on our service, even if it's a limited number. I mean, I understand that they don't want the whole plan to be, but I don't understand why these guys are so against international players. It's, it's, it's something that the competitive scene needs, especially in South Africa, and especially because we're behind the, the rest of the world with eSports. If we want to make it a... A success. I think we need the experience of these guys, and not just watch their YouTube channels. I think we yeah, need to invite them into our community. Yeah. And why can't we take part in the events? You know, what is stopping us? Um, besides the sort of netcode issue that we've got at the moment, what is stopping us from winning the, one of these events? What the experience. Is, you know? It's exactly. It's experience, exactly that. Exactly. Yeah. The experience. Uh, it's it's an eye opener if you see these guys playing competitively and then yeah, trust we, me. we play <laughs> yeah, you you know and then we play yeah. in local competitions yeah and then it's like what is that it's it's totally totally different yeah. um, there's, there's so much depth in it that we haven't even explored so i think it's it's a big must that we need to end the discussion of the international players and invite them into our community it's, it's also yeah. why we we don't partake in tournaments where they say no international players and we've had a few south african guys set up those tournaments you know and straight away it's no internationals the last tournament we actually played in it was they only allowed one international player per per team wow and and for us like dtk it's it's not run by by flip and it's not run by myself we've got i think it's 12 leaders now so a group of 12 people that make decisions as a consensus for for the betterment of of the clan itself you know and it's yeah. it's a total mix of players but more importantly there's there's seven internationals in that group and i think five of them are ex south africans or south africans that are living abroad so yeah in between us, south africa that's, and that's north, yeah. yeah that's like our family and you saying you know Half of your family can't can't partake in this tournament, but would you guys like to be a part of it? And we wouldn't, you know. Uh, right. If you tell us only two guys, only two internationals, cool. Then then we can we'll talk. split up teams and maybe enter more teams. Uh, yeah, Bal yeah. Balance it out. Yeah. yeah. I think you know what we're lacking a little bit on our side at the moment is just basic stuff that Dice is not giving us. Um, I mean, just the, the rent of servers and you know the whole netcode issue and once we've got that all sorted out i think south africans and especially in the community that we're trying to build at the moment you know we are so raring to go we yeah. want the south african community to just explode but we can't at the moment without the infrastructure that we that we so crave we we can't actually do much with it yeah and it's tough it's Horse tough <laughs> And it's tough for people <laughs> who have supported the Battlefield titles since Bad Company 2. Okay, yes. so yeah. every title since then and played it religiously to still not have that kind of uh, support from them. Yeah. So 
when that next company comes up and brings something better than Battlefield, possibly, it's going to be a hard sell to, to bring us back, you know, yeah. if they give us all of those things that we need. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, yeah. I think um, for, for the newer clans as well, I mean, there's a lot more clans now than there was on Battlefield 4. So our gaming community is strong. But now the guys sit and, and wait and uh, they get frustrated with each other because now yeah. the older clans say we need to go this way and the newer clans don't really know how it used to be. So they just say yes and they want to go in the same direction. Whereas if guys like, figure out what they really want, they can start building the gaming community out in different directions instead of just following the footsteps of the previous clans. So I think that's also important for the newer clans to, to build on what they want and not just listen to the older clans <laughs> that's around. Yeah, well, the, well, the older gamers, you know, that's my biggest problem yes, okay. is people Actually, listening to guys gamers. who have been gaming competitively for 10, 20 years, you know, that's that's great. But it's very different nowadays to what it was then. And it's not always good having leaders, <laughs> you know, uh, being in that position of power for that many years. Just ask Zimbabwe. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, don't, they don't always know what's best. So I love the fact that a lot of the new guys have started YouTube channels. Uh, Steven on, for example, like the videos he's putting out and the gameplay he's putting out, like I've said, Battle Bros. There's a few South African gamers now actually starting YouTube video channels. And it's awesome to watch South African gaming with South African commentary, which is hilarious. And it's a lot better than these... That's the best thing about Battle Bros is no one gives a shit if we swear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's the thing. Guys need to mature up and then say, well, that guy's maybe not like me, but it shouldn't yeah. defend me. He's just yeah. his own person and we need to allow him to be his own person. And, and on that note, it's good that the younger guys or the, the new Atlants get their leaders to start standing up as well and go through the ranks instead of just following the older guys. Because yeah. that's what yeah. the gaming community needs. We need the new leaders and maybe decide where they want to take the competitive scene and not just follow the pre the older leaders. Yeah, and it, it shouldn't be a leader anyway. It shouldn't be a dictatorship. You know, we, we yeah. offended someone with a word that's now become a clan. I've seen the Puss clan. <laughs> Love on SA servers. <laughs> there it is for everyone to see. I still can't see. say that. I can't. Okay, okay. We wouldn't expect you to because you're a lady, but but seriously, right? it's it's awesome seeing <laughs> South African clags with South African flavor just popping out of the woodworks. And not, uh, not just, yeah. I saw it's somebody like... named Bulavos. I was like, there we go. You. <laughs> <laughs> Off the pissing grit, where do you go from there? Put a boss. Right. That's where right. you go. <laughs> but try explaining one... that when your when your overseas friends come over and they play <laughs> on your servers, and they're like, "What is this?" And I'm trying to. Yeah. I can't say that clan name. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I you, think you, get, some... you have to explain why. No, no. We'll just leave that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just imagine having a guy like Pustlap Patrolli in the clan. And your body chat the whole time is like Pustlap this, Pustlap that. I mean, yeah, see, that guy's, that guy's awesome. Shout that out. That guy's awesome. <laughs> well, it's okay. Yeah. As, long as, as long as I can say every time, people of exceptional skill. Because that's what the clan stands for. People of exceptional skill. Uh, uh, it's oh, very we well worded. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even know I, that. I didn't, I didn't know it was an acronym. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> With purpose, though. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but guys. Yeah. Thanks for dropping by. And, um, yeah, we'll definitely, you know, see a lot more. I think of DTK around, and I'm hoping that uh, well, that's a, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I've dropped in on a couple games now, and it's really fun. So um, uh, any, I think any, I'll be doing that again. Is, yeah, anybody is always welcome. I mean, we're not that type of people yeah. who's going to chase you out of our chat because we we want to have our moments. Everybody is welcome in our chat. 
Even well, if you do have your moments, like... you just have them publicly yeah. in the chat. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the only difference. <laughs> With reason, though, right? Yeah. yeah. And a shout out to all the clans. I mean, they're always welcome. There's a lot of guys who don't know us who just said stories and stuff. So they're all welcome to, to get to know us in our chat. And I can guarantee you that they'll have fun there. There's a lot of yeah. colorful people in the clan. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and they, they, they're not as harsh as people think they are. I don't know. We're not scary people at all. You're not? And, no. and we don't, I'm and a little we don't scared of this Wesley guy. I'm a, I'll be honest. No. Well, I just want to Smokey. You need to be little... scared of him, but yeah, it's fun. <laughs> we, yeah. we keep him in the cage most of the time. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just double check on who's in the party before I come in, okay? There we go. There is, we that, go. is that easier? No, knock before just, entering. Yeah, yeah, just knock before entering. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going, hi, is everyone decent? Thanks. <laughs> and uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks to to Skelly Rebel and uh, Yaku and you and all the guys at Battle Bros. And just you guys are doing, doing a great job. Doing, there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We really and appreciate think, that. It's, it's nice to hear I'm, feedback. No, I don't think a lot of guys say thank you enough. I mean, you guys do it without really asking anything from it, uh, except that the guys partake in it. And I think as a community, we should do that. We should support you guys in everything you do. You guys have been doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate that. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure I speak for uh, for all the Battle Bros, um, for Scatty, for uh, for Yaku, for Rulof, and for Rassi. I mean, we yeah, we do love what we do. So keep it up. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. All right. So um, thank you then to Flip and Wesley from DTK for spending time with me and going through this interview. Um, and yeah, show a bit of support when you see DTK. Teabag them a little bit and let them know you watched the interview. It's encouraged. It's encouraged. <laughs> Tala what you must. <laughs> Tala what you must, maybe. <laughs> Away. <laughs> Away. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cool. Cheers. Bye. Behind every gun sight is a human being. We are those people. Promise me that you'll get me back in one piece. Okay, I promise. Come on! You may find you're out there all alone, you know that. You can never stop the progress of machines!